Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ali McGabel and we are doing link budget or link power budget. In this presentation, in this short video, we'll find out how do we budget for the power, uh, how much power is needed to get to the transmitter. Or given a certain power, how much is the distance that the, we can cover. So it give you the coverage or the amount of the transmitter power. Once again, I'd like to acknowledge that some slides come from Dr. Wajia Wassoud and some other colleagues. What and why link budget analysis? Link budget parameters, basic transmission theory. We'll look at flux, power flux density and received power and link budget. Four easy steps to good link power budget. Uh, and then, of course, we'll have some examples in, in the coming videos. So to start from the transmitter, there is the high power amplifier, the HPA. The circuit will give you a certain power P out. I'd like you to know that not all the power will go to the antenna, but rather there are some losses in the wires or cables or waveguide or whatever the medium is. So we'll call this P sub out for our terminology. This is PT that goes to the antenna and we have some loss here LT. So the output power from the high power amplifier is P out in watts and then some power will be, will be lost before getting to the antenna so we can relate them whether you are using linear scale or db scale or whatever the way you represent the loss the relation between this will be uh, pt will be expected to be less than the p out okay so pt is the power into the antenna and p out is the power out of the high power amplifier remember that what what is important is the ERB. So we'll be defining the ERB. And we did this in the antenna uh, video. If you haven't seen that video, you can watch the video about antenna for communication engineers. We, we, we have stated there the, the meaning of ERB and we have found that the ERB is effective isotropic radiator power, which is PT times GT, which is the power into the antenna times the gain of the antenna. So we'll specify the ERB and you can get this ERB by either increasing the power or increasing the gain of the antenna. The product of the power and the gain of the antenna is called the ERP. The power flux density. Remember that if we start with an isotropic radiator, then the radiated field will be like, a, like a, a sphere. And if your antenna is, is a practical directional, then of course the, the power will, will have a certain radiation shape. We want to find the power density at the receiver. So PT is at the transmitter. So we want to know how much power is received. We need to go through what's called the, the flux density, which is power relative to area, because then the receiver size or the antenna size will determine how much power we receive. So the flux is measured in watts per meter squared, watts per area. And then of course you can set, you can use a certain area for the receiver antenna and then get uh, a certain amount of power. We can start by assuming that the medium is lossless, which means the wave that we transmit will propagate, will spread in, 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 this, in, in, the, in the medium. Uh, but to be more practi practical, some mediums will, will cause losses and not all the signal will propagate, some of the signal will be absorbed. But its power pass through a spherical shell, as we mentioned, if we have isotropic radiator, and the area of this sphere is 4 by r squared. So if you want the flux density here, it's going to be PT divided by 4 by r squared. Or the amount of spread loss is going to be 1 over 4 by r squared. That gives you how much power is being spreaded as you go away from the radiator. The power flux density is also referred to as PFD, power F P F D power flux density. And the measurement and its unit is watts per meter squared, as I mentioned before. It's power per area squared, or per area, sorry. Now, we need to know that this power flux density is a regulated parameter, which means you cannot just put any uh, power on the air. We need to make sure that for a given area, there is a certain power that we do not exceed. For example, CCIR regulates limited uh, regulates the limit for the PDF for the PFD rather of any wireless satellite system. 
So if you exceed this, it means you are overdoing it, you're radiating more. CCIR, by the way, here are the abbreviations, International Radio Consultative Committee. They regulate and enforce by the signature nations, by, by certain countries or most of the countries, they are signing for the document, signing for the agreement of CCIR, so they have to respect this. And that tell you when you buy a mobile phone, uh, the power that comes from a mobile has to respect a certain threshold to make sure that you don't get uh, the power over your body exceeding that limit. And this will allow for controlling the interference. And it has uh, more importance when, when we deal with satellite systems, especially when we deal with low orbit satellites, because low orbit are close to the Earth. And of course, uh, the signal received will be relatively high, so we have to control that. So in this slide, we have reviewed the meaning of power flux density, and we have made sure, made, made clear that it's a regulated parameter. From the flux density, we can say now the flux is equal to the earth divided by 4 by r squared, or pt times gt. Now we have included the antenna. We started by saying pt over 4 by r, r squared. Now we have to make sure that the antenna is there. The antenna gain is there. We, we can increase by flux the flux by controlling one of these colored parameters, so either increase pg or reduce r. Now the power available at the receiver side, this is flux density. How much power do we receive? You have to multiply by the effective area of showing in purple. So meter squared times watts per meter squared, you get the power received, p sub r now. Remember this is p sub t and this is p sub r. So the received power will add this parameter, which is the area of the effective area rather, because not of the area would be effective. So um, the physical area, the dimension of the antenna, let's say you have a square antenna, it has width times height, that will be the physical area, but not of all of it is effective. We have to scale by the efficiency, which is, which is efficiency of the antenna. Okay, so with new parameters, a sub A, the area of the received, uh, effective area of the received antenna, and then you have the physical area and the efficiency, and they are related with the following equation. Okay, now we will see some examples. So for, for this, as we, as we develop our blink budget analysis, we would like to go from the transmitter to the receiver. Just, uh, just since we mentioned the antenna and size and dimension, I'd just like to recall and add to what we have presented into the antenna, that there are different antenna dimensions. For example, there are um, antenna uh, which are horn antenna, they have a certain aperture. Aperture is the, is the opening here of the antenna, it's called the aperture, very common terminology. Antenna have maximum gain G related to the effective aperture, which is the area here, A sub A. For this type of antenna, for different antennas has different uh, different equations. Since, uh, since we are not specialized in antenna design, we just need to have uh, uh, to have uh, uh, the general idea. Of course, if you want to be more exact, more correct, you will have to take the uh, antenna design course. The physical uh, the physical uh, area of the antenna is, of course, is related to the dimension. For example, if you have uh, the dish antenna, then it would be pi r squared or pi r squared, where, where you can define the diameter to be uh, here equal to d. So uh, then this is the radius. If you use the diameter, of course, you have to divide it's d over 2, but then when you square, it becomes d squared over 4. Nothing new here, it's just r is the radius from here to here, and then d is the diameter of, of the dish antenna, or this of because it has a kind of circular uh, opening. So we can have we can relate these physical dimensions to the gain of the antenna. Remember there is GT in the equation, or the gain of the antenna in general, whether GR or GT, the transmitter or receiver. The gain is, can be related to the effective area of the antenna or the physical area of the antenna. Notice that here it's function of also the wavelength. So as your wavelength increases, the gain decreases for a given area. And this is why uh, low frequency antennas require big dimensions so because this becomes large and then you have to make it up by the area as i mentioned this is for specific antennas just to give you that a physical area is related to effective area and effective area also would give you the gain of the antenna 
typical efficiency for the for the reflector antenna is up from 50 to 60 percent and for the horns antenna shown at the top uh, it's from 65 to 80 percent they are these are effective antennas again these numbers are just rough numbers they could change with the development of the antenna design technology okay so these are the just to give you the more about the aperture antenna types we have if horn are efficient low gain wide beam okay now we can understand this efficient in terms of eta and then we have low gain wide g is relatively small then we have wide wide beam they're not very directional uh, for the reflector antenna they have high gain narrow beam and maybe deployed in space in many applications this is we see this in the labs and we see this in uh, in, in many applications like mobile wireless and satellite application the, uh, the picture on the right shows you just for the whole antenna there are different ways even for connecting the feeder it could be center symmetric font feed because this 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 service is just a reflector so it could it could be this direction that direction and <coughs> sorry I'll, uh, alternatively you could have uh, offset fit you have you have offset fit or you have uh, other types this is just to show you to open up your mind so this this example is shown similar to the symmetric font field which we have in most of our tvs at at home or or sometimes it's offset like this one for for the reflector antenna we can give some more examples about uh, how uh, the the antenna beam width is related to the dimension so the directivity of the antenna so a rule of thumb to calculate the reflector antenna beam width you can use the following equation so all these parameters are somehow related once we specify the antenna give me the diameter give me the wavelength which frequency operate with we can we can guess how much is the 3d beam width for for this antenna okay we can uh, we can uh, also include the gain in the equation okay so uh, because we know that um, this is the equation for the gain now we can solve for d and of course substitute for theta here so we are solving for d it becomes 75 uh, by over th over theta and of course um, this is uh, theta squared if you have two dimensional you can have uh, horizontal and uh, in the e plane or h plane so this becomes our final equation this relates the gain to the beam width of course they are inversely related if you if you have less beam width which means your your antenna is focused uh, you'll get higher gain again this is just specific for the reflector antenna so uh, assuming uh, for instance a typical aperture size of 0.5 uh, efficiency of 0.55 and substituting uh, then uh, we can substitute for at the efficiency and then that's the relation between the gain for a typical efficiency would be the following relation so just give the the beam width on x on e on an h plane on the two dimensions and th there we go we got what we uh, are looking for so this is the horn and the received and this is the reflector and it's showing uh, how is the beam width being concentrated i think we had enough about antenna maybe we can get back to our link budget equation back to the receiver power the power available at the receiver of antenna aperture size equal uh, effective area equal to AE can be given by the following equation. So the receiver, the receiver uh, A sub R is the receiver antenna area. Of course, what, what matters is the effective area, not just the physical area. So now the equation has PT times GT. This is the uh, transmitter side. And here is as we, tra as we travel in, in, in the channel. And now we got to include the receiver side. So this is effective area. So if you can also solve for the gain equation. This is the gain equation we had in the previous slide. So the effective area equal to gr times lambda squared over 4 by. In terms of the antenna gain at the receiver side, we can say that we can come up with what we call the Ferris equation transmission formula. And it, it's, it's given by the received power equal to the transmitted. This is more of logical the transmitted power times gain of transmitting antenna times gain of the receiving antenna times a factor that is related to to the propagation 
through the medium as we spread in the, in the, in the, in the channel. I would love that you remember this equation because it makes sense. So it, it makes a lot of sense. So we can also inverse the term okay, uh, because we could have path loss. We could call this the path loss. It's the loss due to the path in blue. It's also known as the free space loss because of we are assuming a loss loss medium and uh, uh, there is no obstacles, nothing. So we call it free space loss. You can, this is again, now it's written as a multiplication by the transmit power. If you invert, then we have, we call it loss. So we have path loss, which is 4 by r squared over uh, lambda. Everything is, of course, being squared. Now, if you if you write this in terms of loss, then we would divide. We'd, we would divide because we have already flipped the equation. So we can also say that the received power equal to PT times ZT times ZR divided by the loss. Remember that these are just different ways of writing. This does not add, should not add to the complexity of the topic. Just keep things simple. If you know this, you already know others. Now, if you want to include more losses, so just the equation will look bigger. So we have um, what we have demonstrated was an ideal case. For we just looked at the free space path loss of, let's say, spreading, uh, spher spherical spreading. Now, if you want to include other losses, then the equation will look power received equal to power transmitted times gain of transmitter antenna times gain of received antenna. And then you include all the losses, including the spreading loss, the path loss. So we could have, for example, losses due to attenuation in atmosphere, losses associated with transmitting antenna, losses associated with the receiving antenna, I mean additional losses, losses due to polarization, polarization mismatch, you have the antenna is not correctly positioned, any other losses unknown, for example, uh, we can have other, other reasons for humidity, whatever factor is, and also we can have losses at the receiver side. So just make sure that when you have the gain, you remove all the losses, and that would be easy, relatively easy to do. We'll see examples. So uh, the transmission formula, uh, if we put things together, we had this relation in the beginning for the transmitter. We know also the R. So uh, PT is the transmitted power. LT is the loss between the source and the, and the transmitter antenna. R is effective isotropic radiator. We can put things together. And we, what we get is just different ways of writing. So either we have PT times GT, we can collect these two terms together and write in terms of R. And somebody else, for example, can just write in terms of P out uh, and solve in different way. P out times BT or BG, whatever the, the way you, you, you write. Uh, and then you include, if you compare these, you include the loss at the transmitter. So this is a way, different ways of writing for, for the same thing. If you want to, to translate things in, into dB, remember in um, linear scale, if you go to dB, the division will become subtraction and multiplication will become addition. So again, this is the same formula if you express your items in dB. It's usually much easier to handle because dealing with subtraction addition is, is just uh, much easier. And I'm just writing the, if you go back to our figure, we have things in plus and things in minus. Gain is usually represented in plus and minus are the losses. Some of the losses are the transmitter or the channel or the received side. The calculation of the received signal based on the transmitter's power and all losses and gains involved until we get to the receiver is called the link budget power budget or link budget analysis or link budgeting. So if we will get some examples where we give all these problems and you as an engineer will have to design how much power transmitted or how much far we can go uh, you can just analyze our budget. The received power is commonly referred as the carrier power. We are not here into what, what happens into the information, so it's the received carrier power. Four easy ways to, to for good link power analysis. First, draw and sketch the link path. It doesn't have to be artistic, just, draw, just like my previous example. Help this will help you find the stuff you you are looking for. You you will read the statement and from your manager, your boss, and then um, add it, or don't forget any of the losses. 
think carefully include all significant effective uh, effect, uh, effects on the link budget okay um, if there's anything that's not uh, efficient or not significant we just ne need to make sure that we um, uh, note and justify anything that we ignore um, roll up large sections for example we'll collect everything on, on the transmitter side everything in the channel everything in the path loss and then everything at the receiver side that will make things more organized and of course we'll show all the component for these details use roll up uh, results to build a link review i will show you the example i'm just setting the steps always 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 use units of parameters db watts hertz because sometimes the unit could get you confused describe any unusual any unusual element for example if we if you are told that there is loss caused by h2 h2o on the rad, uh, the radam radam is um, by the way what you see here in this cover uh, this a protective cover this this is a uh, the word radam come from uh, come from the word radar and dome uh, so we have the radom or the radom uh, this is for to protect the the antenna or the or the radar from from humidity and other other weather conditions so once again draw and sketch think carefully collect all important sections and comment on uh, uh, and look at uh, the units and describe any unusual losses so uh, here is an example that i just like you to look at these are um, the transmitted parameters we have the value the total and then the units and then we have the receiver and then we have the, the slant path or the path itself i'll show you some examples in coming videos just be with us and we'll see you in coming videos